Hey everybody, it's your host Darren Carter, the party starter. I want to thank you guys so much for checking out the Pocket Party Podcast. Do me a huge favor, go to Apple, give it a nice five-star review. If you're on YouTube, leave some comments, share the links, let people know that you'll enjoy this podcast. We're calling Mike Black. Hello? Hello, Mr. Mike Black. Good morning. How's it going? Good. I'm saying morning because we just recorded an episode and now it is 1.33 in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. But we're, this is our morning. We're coming alive now. Energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, big shout out to Canadian Maple Stirrup. He commented, he said that when he listens to our podcast when with the two of us, he feels like it's a nice good morning show starting his day. And uh, I don't know what time he starts his day, but you know, I, I could see that. You know, we just 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. So this is like a, and this is like more of like an afternoon vibe. Mm hmm. <laughs> Imagine an afternoon vibe podcast. I don't even know what that would be. Uh, this. Yeah, exactly. This but, uh, is it. This <laughs> is it. This is it. Yay. No. Yeah. This is. I like uh, to tease uh, the comedy store pianist uh, or a company as Chris Glick, who's kind of an older gentleman. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm usually up last, so it's fun to give him a little credit at the end of the night and go, this guy's been playing all night for you guys. He had to wake up at 7 PM to get here to see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <clears throat> yeah. Those, uh, I think they call those, uh, the rock and roll hours, you know, uh, right. Yeah. Or something like that. And then there's another phrase I remember hearing like disco nap, meaning they'd stayed up all night and then they vampire but, hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All that kind of thing. I, I don't do that as much as I used to. I used to do a lot when I was yeah. in my twenties, where I'm like, you know, shut the curtain, sleep, and then. Have well, a... you're a family man now. You don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't have a choice, and it's like, <laughs> exactly. I don't have a choice. Even when I'm on the road, though, I'm just out of the. I mean, I do sleep longer than because I do. I still want to get my sleep in. You know, I don't. I don't want to yeah. be like you know David Goggins and wake up at three a.m. and I'm like, well, let me because I don't want to be tired for the shows, and you don't want to be the guy yawning uh, in a social situation at a comedy club, you know? Where you're like, <laughs> no, you know. <clears throat> well, and what you really don't want to do is I did this once where I was just burning the candle at both ends that week, and I literally fell asleep at a show while one of my friends was performing. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that yeah. was. That was rough. That that's a hard one to explain afterwards. Yeah. No, you're really funny. It's just uh, <laughs> it's just a long week. <laughs> long week. I know. I've been busted like yawning. You don't want to be yawning during their set, you know. But uh, what I was going to tell you is the the previous episode we were talking. We got a little bit into it at the end, and I wanted to extend that. We we're talking about Las Vegas and what it was like back in the day, or even when we were kids. Um, oh yeah. And I, I called my wife in between shows. And I found out, I told you in the previous episode that this the guy that sold us the suit when I got married, he was like, yeah, sometimes I'll get in my car and I'll drive all the way to Las Vegas for some strawberry shortcake. Man, this thing is 14 inches high. It's the best. And then I'll get in my car and come right back. And you know, Right. And I asked my wife, I said, what was the name of the casino? And she said it was the Circus Circus. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which it is, all connects. It all connects. Uh, and... Uh, as as yeah, because I had mentioned the, the Pink Pony where they had the outstanding pancakes uh, also at Circus oh, yeah. Circus. It's funny. I do. I remember eating the, the shortcake going, it's good, but it's not worth driving. Like, I don't, it's not that big and it's not that, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't like, he made it sound like it was just amazing, you know? He may live in a place too where they don't have strawberry shortcake at all. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's all amazing to him. I do remember that uh, Circus Circus was the first place that I tried uh, hot wings mm. when I was a kid. I had never tried them before. But, you know, they had that big uh, buffet. Uh, and they it was on the signs. They used to brag about everything on all the signs in Las Vegas. But they had a big oh, yeah. sign that said, the biggest buffet plate in Las Vegas. Because <laughs> the plates they used yeah. were... Yeah. so big <laughs> and their buffet was it back then every place had an amazing buffet and it 
puts to shame any like uh sizzler or golden corral or any of those sort of places uh because the one in circus circus had four rows Mm. of the exact same thing but just like it was like about a hundred yards of food in each row yeah and it was like they had a carving station with like turkey and roast beef and stuff like that (laughs) but then they had all the other stuff and it just went on forever and as a kid, you were introduced to a lot of food that you didn't even know existed until then. And I tried hot wings and I was like, these are amazing. <laughs> but that yeah, was the yeah. big thing in the U.S., you know. It's funny. I was telling my wife about the Circus Circus and she's like, you know, I didn't really like the circus circuit but she's saying as an adult I go, well that's because you're not she goes yeah yeah so it's not but when you're a kid i mean when you're a kid when you're like 10 years old circus circus is the best casino in las vegas you know i mean there's you're not like it isn't anymore <laughs> right, right. I, I, yeah but i could just imagine now, like yeah now it looks like a place it's very post-apocalyptic now <laughs> yeah. you know like I could just it looks Im- like a place you went to survive a zombie fight or something. <laughs> right, but as but, a kid, uh, you're not. As a kid, you're not like you know. I love Caesar's Palace. You know, as a kid, you're gonna be like, I like no. Circus Circus. That's my jam. You and know? I'll say, being a kid in the '80s <clears throat> at Circus Circus, I don't know if there was a better place outside of Disneyland for a kid because they had on the ground level a 24-hour arcade that had about 100 games in it. Wow. Then they had uh, a staircase up to the mezzanine. Halfway up the staircase, there was an arcade that had 12 games in it. (laughs) Then on the uh, mezzanine level, that was the level that had that spinning bar that for parents, you know, it was a, a bar that rotated consistently. Oh, yeah. But they also had a midway, which was like carnival games that went all the way around. And wow. it, they probably had like 30 different carnival games where you could win stuffed animals like and stuff. Dart toss and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that kind of thing. Like throw a bag at some uh, milk cartons. Uh, yeah, throw these bean bag in the clown's mouth. Water one where you yeah shoot water into a clown's mouth. And you could trade up your prizes and get bigger prizes and stuff. I don't think I ever left there without a humongous stuffed animal. <laughs> but so on cool. that level, they had the biggest arcade in Las Vegas. Mm. And it was probably close to 200 games. And it was like whatever had just come out, they always had. And they had a lot of like games from overseas that were never, I never saw them anywhere else at all. The, it was the first place to get like Dragon's Lair, Space Ace, uh, Punch Out, I remember, mm. was a big, exciting new game there. <laughs> uh, you know, and they had like the old, like arcade classic stuff. Like, you remember the, <clears throat> the arm wrestler? Oh, yeah. Where it was like a, uh, kids today wouldn't even understand this thing yeah, it was yeah. <laughs> a big fake fabrication of a masked wrestler yeah right uh, like a 3d printed type of thing of a masked wrestler and he was all painted up and then his big robot arm was sticking out <laughs> and you would put money in the slot <laughs> and you'd arm wrestle and a robot arm wrestle a robot <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i don't think i ever saw anyone win ever in my life you know <clears throat> yeah remember this phrase no shit sherlock <laughs> yeah but they had uh, they had that they had like the full versions of games uh, of cabinets where you have played star wars the arcade game where it was all like the like green neon lines and stuff like that yeah and it was just barely a video game at that point well most people have experienced playing it standing at like an arcade cabinet Mm. in vegas they had the one that you sit in so it simulates being in an x-wing cockpit Mm. and they had a bunch of games like that like they had a discs of tron 
that you had you went inside and it was they had like neon lights inside so you felt like you were in tron you know <laughs> and they had you know all the other standard like ski ball and uh table tennis and uh all that sort of stuff too but the video games they had were just out of this world Wow. I, w I also, um, I was looking up right now images of Circus Circus. In the 1970s, they had a, a carousel bar. It looked like a merry-go-round. And in the center is where the bartender would be. And, and, and it, everybody was around it, almost like a merry. I, don't, I wonder if it rotated. Yeah, th yeah, that's the rotating bar that I was Oh, that's the one about. you were talking about. Wow, that is so cool. And they, they do a parody of Circus Circus in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And you see, like, Johnny Depp and Benicio Del Toro who are just blitzed out of their minds trying to get out of the spinning bar. <laughs> and, and he's like, <laughs> when's it going to stop? It never stops. It's never going to stop. It needs to stop so I can get off. It's never going to stop. You have to jump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the, um, yeah, it was actually a fun bar. But uh, aside from, like, all of that stuff, I didn't even mention the craziest thing there was they did live circus acts over the casino. So there was like acrobats and what, like in the stuff. casino or out or on outdoors. No, I mean over it, literally over it. Mm. There's uh all the gamblers and stuff and then there's a net just wow. above their heads. Oh wow. And up above that is people on trapeze, <laughs> you know, like I wonder uh, if they do still it. do you think they still do that or is that they might. I don't know if, if they could or not, but it was so crazy seeing, like, the gamblers below while, like, people are doing flips on the trapeze and stuff like that, you know? I'm not into gambling, I'm, thank God, because it's, uh, it can be, man, you know, it can be addictive, but uh, we all know that, but... Uh, I, yeah. yeah. I uh, I remember when I was 21, you know, you, you hit 21, you're like, I'm all right, I'm going to try my, I'm going to try some gambling, and, and uh, one that was pretty easy to you know figure out was blackjack it's like okay whoever gets 21 <clears throat> or closest to 20 excuse me yeah um will win and i remember um i i turned to the guy next to me and i was like yeah i lost a lot of money last night and he goes he goes no he goes how much and i go 12 dollars <laughs> <laughs> and he's just got a big old grin on his face. You know, I look I was super wet behind the ears and he's like, "That's yeah, a yeah, $12. That's a lot of money." Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like but I do remember distinctly like cuz I was betting like $2, $2 and then <clears throat> $12 gone just like that. <laughs> yeah, and it that yeah. $12 is the is like the safety amount for most gamblers <laughs> right, where they like right. As long as I still have twelve dollars, I can get a prime rib dinner and I can get home. Yeah, that was know? like in the nineties, early nineties, and I was like, you know, I'm not into. Yeah, like I saw yeah. a guy last night. I was at a, a local comedy club, and he was at the bar the entire time on his phone playing. And I, I go, what? I, it was poker. He's playing poker. And then about a half hour later, I could see his. He was really into it, and I go, is this is this just for fun or is this money? Because oh, this is real money. This is real money. He was yeah. like trying to make money i mean i just dude it's just i wouldn't want to do that i wouldn't want that you know yeah I, mean? I don't like i'm glad i never got super into gambling i get into it when i'm in vegas but god if i had the option to gamble 24 7 on my phone i don't think that would be good for me at all i'd, I'd be broke right you know? it's like i mean yeah exactly it's like you know, he was, uh, he was like, and he was between the tension of gambling and then not knowing when he was, he's like, okay, uh, am I up in eight minutes? Okay. And I'm like, oh man, I don't want that kind of. Yeah. Cause the expression, the house always wins is absolutely true. <laughs> right. It's just mathematics. It's no matter how well you do, eventually the longer you're there, you're going to put all that money back in the casino if you don't. The, the trick is, like, if you win, and nobody does this, but if you win, leave. If you win, like, a, a decent amount of money, get out of the casino. Yeah. That should be all you are thinking about is how do I escape from here now that I have 
but I've won some money. Yeah, have but, a little fun with it and then walk away. But oh, I, this yeah, is the start of a streak, and I'm gonna win bigger on this next thing because you know God wants me to or whatever. Uh, that is not the case. It, you, whatever you won, be thankful mm. you won it, and go eat, go see a movie, go to sleep in your hotel room. You right. know, but don't go back to the casino thinking, oh, they they want me to. I should keep gambling and ride out this amazing luck streak that I'm having. Hmm. That's what they're counting on yeah. is that you do that. <clears throat> I was just reading that they gave Frank Sinatra $50,000 gambling chips. You know, they want to get him out there gambling people, you know, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of well, thing for, they would do in Vegas. You know? Yeah. Th but that is brilliant because it's a good promotion for them. If, if, if people are leaving your casino, with pictures of them gambling with Frank Sinatra, the amount of business that generates oh, for yeah. you is incalculable, you know? So the, they could have given him a million dollars credit and it would have been one of the best investments you could make. That would be cool to gamble with uh, the, where the casino gives you the money. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, and he, you know, of course, he was at the level where he didn't really need it, but, you know, uh, it, it was not a, a crazy investment on their part at all. Right. You know, but, uh, yeah, you know, there, there were a lot of tricks and stuff like that, but ultimately it, does, it doesn't matter what the game is. If you play it long enough, you're going to lose. So if you win get out of there but nobody does that <laughs> nobody know? does that i know it's like uh um let, you know, hey let's do some imaginary gambling okay let's we're i'm spinning the wheel it's gonna land on a color in, in, i'll tell in, you how you really win or how you, it used to be it's not so much this way anymore uh -huh. but the people that really won was the people that went to vegas and didn't give a shit about gambling mm. but they liked like good food and good shows and stuff like that yeah because the shows were incredibly reasonably priced. And a lot of times you would get comp tickets to them and stuff like that just for uh, coming to a certain hotel. Uh, they, back then they had things like four ninety nine prime rib dinners and stuff like that. Right. And they were actually really good, you know, and uh, a lot of good shopping on the strip. You know, there, there's just a lot of fun stuff to do if you're not there to gamble and you know if if you go to vegas with like 500 bucks and you're not gambling at all you're actually going to have an amazing time <laughs> totally like the, i went to i saw a show the last time i was in or one of the times i was in vegas and it was uh it was called the million dollar quartet and it was uh it was basically it was it was a musical. It was like a play, but it was uh, you know they were they were you know it was El the you know Elvis Presley and it was that it was from that time that they all went back to Memphis and during Christmas and they were jamming in, at Sun Records and it was really oh, wow. cool. I mean, it, obviously it wasn't really Elvis Presley, but it's you know they're doing their thing and they're singing all the hits and it was Jerry Lee Lewis. Do you know who the Million Dollar Court Court is? Can you can you name them? Car Let me think. Carl Perkins. Elvis Presley, Jerry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Jerry Lee Lewis, and was the fourth one Johnny Cash? I was gonna say it's 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 got to either be him or like Roy Orbison or someone. Oh, it might have been Roy. Let me let me look it up. Million dollar. Yep, yeah, there it is. Million dollar quartet. It was. Uh, oh yeah, see the million. It's a live stage musical. Man, they were so good. Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Yeah. Yeah, they were good, man. It was good. It felt cool. Especially if you go in there like like you know, excited, you know, like okay, I know it's not really them, but it's gonna be singing those songs which I like. And yeah. Uh, you know. Well, like that Elvis movie isn't gonna be Elvis either, but I'm excited to see that, you know. Oh, me too, man. Me too. Like even just the the two trailers I've seen, like the costumes and the the way it looks, like I love that way. Remember the Elvis Presley, the sixty eight comeback, how it said Elvis and the light yeah. bulbs and it has a lot of that that look to it i love that stuff yeah that's a that director is very talented boz lerman he did the the romeo and juliet that leonardo dicaprio was in he did the great gatsby 
uh, Moulin Rouge. So oh, I, I thought he's a really interesting and good choice for for this movie. I I hope it's good. It looks like it will be. I hope it's good too. I mean, it's. I mean, you're right. You're right. You hope it's good, but I, from the trailers I've seen, and then the, you know, if they use the music correctly, it's going to be good. And yeah. You know, I heard a remix the other day, uh, Elvis remix, and it was actually really good. And I thought, man, that's got to be a remix because they laid a little heavy on the electric organ. It kind of had that Stevie Wonder vibe. And uh-huh. um, and, I, and I looked it up, and sure enough, it was a remix. But it was good, though. It was almost like, remember that remix that came out about 20 years ago? A little less conversation, a lot more action. Yeah. Yeah, yeah was, that one was really Just well like done. that, where they updated, and it sounded good. I like, I like that a lot. Yeah, and that was one of his songs that was not a huge hit before. I don't think. I don't. You're right. You're right about that. I think I'd heard that as well. And so, them remixing it and turning it into a hit, I I really like stuff like that a lot more than like. You remember when they remade Psycho and it was a shot for shot remake of Psycho? Yeah, only it was with in Vince color. Vaughn. I think was it? Yeah, with Vince Vaughn and Anne Hache. And yeah. what'd you think? I was like. I just thought, why? Right, if, if right, you're doing right. It exactly like the original, I I just didn't understand the point of it. Yeah. Whereas, like, if they had instead done, uh, like a movie that was terrible, like uh, I don't know, this is just an example, uh, <laughs> uh, Battle Beyond the Stars, one of the craziest most terrible b movie science fiction movies mm. if they did like a legitimate version of that today oh uh, uh that was like they used good special effects and good actors and had a good writer i would be all for that i'm all for improving mm. a thing that sucked but if they're like oh we're gonna remake star wars why star wars is good already right it doesn't need to be remade, you know like t- yeah exactly but like yeah, like the- you know w- you know we I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of weezer and um they have a t- an album it's called the t- i believe it's called the teal album and they do covers but i i don't know i like it because it's like uh it's their well, style yeah, and it- it's also yeah it's their style on it you're you're hearing it through their filter yeah, although one of the that, songs I'm like, damn, that sounds like the real one. It's it's the the ELO song, Electric Like Orchestra. It's the Mr. Blue or something like that. Mr. Blue. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Blue Sky. Mr. Blue Sky. Yeah. But, How uh, does it go, Darren? <laughs> I know, Mr. Blue Sky, Mr. Blue Sky. Oh, go do 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 do. Mr. Blue Sky. I don't know. Something like that. That's that's exactly how it goes. <laughs> it goes. Exactly like that. Do you know how it goes? Can you can you do it? Uh, no, it's a it's a very tricky song. I know. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Sun is shining in the sky. There ain't a cloud in sight. I suck, man. I can't da, do this. Da, 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 da. It's stop. Yeah. Mr. Oh yeah, it's it's all over the place. It's hard to sing. Mr. Yeah. Blue Sky, please don't Especially a cappella because it's it's almost all instrumental. Yeah. Hey you with yeah. the pretty face. Welcome to the, to the human human race. race. A celebration, Mr. Okay, this is no one's gonna Yeah. <laughs> no nobody gonna, wants nobody wants to hear this. So. Yeah. That that remix song is called Clean Up Your Own Backyard. Elvis Presley, Clean Up Your Own Backyard. And uh, apparently they put it on YouTube, in tw- so it must have came out in 2021. And uh, it's called the Chromi- Chromio Remix. Oh. So look that up sometime. It's uh, I'd play it, but I don't want to get kicked off YouTube or get flagged or anything. But it's good. Clean up your <laughs> own backyard. And it kind of had that Stevie Wonder. Kind of had that. It was like, man, that's good. But Weird. Weird, weird, weird. You know what I was going to have you do? but it's, um, Well, actually, I was going to say, sadly, our date got canceled at Flappers in June 24th. But on the positive side, I'll be filming a movie that night. So, uh, you know, that's good, I guess. I it's, it's uh, Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I'm, I was bummed. Yeah, I was bummed. Like, you know how it is. You, you, you have a pretty open calendar. Then all of a sudden, 17 things come through on one day. And you're like, really? June? That's the date? 
Gosh. Yeah, it all has to converge on that thing. Oh, man, like the other day, I, I'm surprised I haven't mentioned this yet, but I got to go to a movie prop auction preview. Cool. And they had all this amazing stuff, but a friend of mine, it was over at the automotive museum. She's really into cars, and she was going to – uh, I invited her to it, but she was like, ah, oh, it's my roommate's birthday that night, and oh, I can't go. And I was like, oh, that sucks, because it's, it's always stuff like that happens when you have things you can't get out of, you know? Right, right. But it the thing was a blast. They had all these, they had a, like, model of an X-Wing fighter from the original Star Wars. Oh, cool. And that thing... I asked them, I was like, what's the biggest piece here? And they were like, oh, it's definitely that. And I was like, what do you think it'll fetch? And they were like, we're hoping for a million dollars. We already have like uh, a bid in from uh, the telephone for 500,000. Wow. And I was like, that's insane. But they had the first uh, appearance comic books of blade which was like tomb of dracula was the first comic he appeared in mm. they had that they had the first appearance of wolverine in, in the incredible hulk issue 181 uh they had the first appearance of spider-man amazing fantasy 15 and they had them with they were auctioning them as bundles with screen used props from each of their movies like the Blade comic book came with his sword from the movie. Uh, the Wolverine comic came with a set of the claws from the movies. And the Spider-Man, wow. they had a web shooter and a pumpkin bomb. <laughs> and so <laughs> you would get cool. the whole thing, uh, like a whole thing set up. But they had, are you an Indiana Jones fan? Yes. You remember the third one, how his dad had that diary of, like all the stuff for the Holy Grail that he'd been, it was like his life's obsession was uh, finding the Holy Grail. They had the Grail wow. diary open to a, a page and it showed like all the notes he'd taken and illustrations and stuff. And then they had the actual Holy Grail next to it. And so wow. that was one of the things you could bid on. It was crazy. Uh, Terminator 2, they had... Uh, you know how the bad guy was that metal shapeshifter? Yep. Like he could change. Well, at one point, he's like turns into a cop, but they needed a shot of him like as a cop, but completely silver. Yeah. And so they had the costume that they made, which was like chrome. It was a complete cop uniform done in chrome. And then a bust of the guy's head done in chrome. Wow. It was all the stuff they needed to make that shot happen. That's the kind of thing that you would bid on if you had a house. Like you couldn't. It'd be weird to oh, have like yeah. a like a small apartment and you have all this this cool no, stuff. You'd, and... you'd have to have that cop lying in bed with you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, you know, I got it for four hundred grand. Uh, I'm, you know, it's uh... I'm just a real big Terminator fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing creepy. When I do the show notes, what was it? What was this called again? It was a prop. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, over at the Peterson automotive museum, Peterson automotive. And what was the, what was the thing called that you went to the prop? Uh, let me check while we're, Oh, okay. I thought you said it earlier. Like it was a prop. It was so... a, like a movie prop auction preview. Oh, okay. so they were just showing stuff that was going to be, uh, at the auction. They oh. had like a, a space marine suit from Aliens. Wow. Uh, yeah, just some really interesting uh, stuff. Yeah, prop stores VIP auction preview, and it was on Saturday the 11th. Wow. And uh, I'm sure they have a lot of the items that were up for grabs on. Uh, yeah. Oh, they had two hoverboards. They had. Oh wow. Michael J. Fox's hoverboard, but they also had the pit bull, which was the one that the uh, Biff's evil son <laughs> rode on. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they, there was just so much stuff. It was, it was really crazy. But then the automotive museum that is still there all the time. 
and that is worth checking out if you ever get a chance to go over there because they have all these like different movie cars and like uh concept cars uh, as you walk into the left is the james bond aston martin and so like all of that stuff was like closed off from where we were going but you could see like glimpses of it as you're going past and you're like yeah. oh i gotta come back and check this place out you know i went to a uh, i did a comedy show at a museum at an automotive museum one that's uh not the peterson but the i don't know if it's in pomona rancho cucamonga it's somewhere out that direction and mm -hmm. uh it was really cool. You're in this, you know, multi-level building, and there's a car lot next to it where they sell cars. And um, you're, you're you're like, and you get to walk around. You're like, wow, there's there's a you know, Andy Griffith's police car or whatever. There's the right. Jeep from Mash or whatever. It, it's so cool to see that. And then they have the different scenes. Like this is the, you know, I love Lucy car watching a movie like like a driving. They they recreate it, and you're. It's so cool to see stuff like that. You know. Fonzie's you motorcycle, expect, or you know, you kind of expect Jay Leno to pop up out of one yeah, of them. Yeah, you know, an interesting thing about this car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, you know, these Batmobiles or whatever, you know, and and I'm not even, <laughs> yeah. in, I'm not even that into cars, but it was just cool. I'm not even seeing that. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Where you're like, wow, it's cool. Then you start fantasizing, like, wow, if I could have any car here. <laughs> yeah, know? I do like those hot rods. Remember, like that. I think it's called like Rat Fink. Remember, like he would draw like those. Oh yeah, the old model kits that they used to have. Yeah, like uh, I always thought that'd be kind of cool to actually own one of those, or like at least drive it. You know. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fun to see what. Like I would, I'd be much more into being like a passenger of someone who knew what they were doing. Yeah. In a hot rod than I would of driving one myself. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like I'm sure I'd have fun, of course, but like. I would like to really see what it can do in the hands of someone that knows what they're doing. Uh, right. You know, like, did, did you ever see a uh, Ford versus Ferrari, the movie? Mm -mm. It, oh, it's an amazing movie. It's uh, Christian Bale and Matt Damon. Mm. And it was up for a bunch of awards, but it's based on a true story of this rivalry between the two companies, Ford and Ferrari. Uh, and they would go, I, I forget the name of the race, but it was a like a big European race. Mm. And every year they would try and beat each other at it. And at one point, the head of uh, Ford Automotive is like, uh, I don't think the guy that we have in charge of our race team, uh, he, he's, he's having doubts about it. And oh. so... The guy goes, well, uh, get in uh, this Ford with me and let's go for a drive and talk about it. And the head of Ford goes, uh, what, just do a few laps? And he's like, unless you're afraid. And he's like, I'm the head of Ford Motor. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> you know? <And> so <laughs> he gets in the car with him and the guy starts driving at like real racing speed. Whoa. And you see just the difference between someone who's really knows what they're doing yeah you know and like anybody else and i was like by the end of it the guy's crying but he you can't tell really it's like a mix of joy and fear yeah. like the head of ford motor company is just wow. like he doesn't know how to handle the emotions that he's having having been in a car while it's doing its maximum you know wow and it's a great little see it's kind of funny but it's also like oh that's pretty amazing to see like when someone who knows their shit is doing their thing you know yeah it's like no that's always yeah. like i don't know in comedy i feel like we're very lucky that we get to see a lot of it free yeah. and you know we get to be in the room when someone like Dave Chappelle is working or like, you know, Dave Attell or uh, Dana Gould or any of these people that are like, just anybody that starts with a D Dave Attell, Dave Chappelle, yeah. <laughs> anyone who's like really at the top of their game. Yeah. Chris rock, you know, we've, uh, we've gone at the comedy store. We've both yep. been there tons of times where he's come in. George Wallace came in one night with a legal pad yeah. and just yeah. destroyed just completely annihilated the room 
It's so it's good. Like, and you know, oh, and I know it doesn't going to be yeah. there for that stuff, you know. You know, uh, and the last time I saw you uh, a couple of weeks ago at the comedy store, I always forget how much I really enjoy watching the very end of the night. A lot of times Don Barris goes on. Oh, and yeah. He, he may not be a big name like those, some of those other comics you've mentioned, but that guy is captivating, man. He, yeah. The way he doesn't stand on stage, like at some point he gets down and, and he sits down and he and he drops his voice like this and he he just man he's so well yeah he's he's, he's got he he's just the king of that late night sort of vibe there and he used to bring like the ding dongers and stuff with him to do that and that they I think they kind of made him just relegate that to the ding dong show. But the thing is, it was like, I think that kind of freed him up in a way, because now it's like, he doesn't need any help. You know, he doesn't need props or bullshit or anything. Just him by himself, he's so good at what he does now. I like that. It's so funny and interesting. It is. It's like, it's great. See the Ding Dong show if you have never seen it. But see him late night at the comedy store that uh that's about as good as it gets you know it's yeah man it's just yeah it's interactive he you know it's just fun to watch and then i like that thing where he he guesses what the couple does you know where he's so right for a living yeah yeah <laughs> can you do a, a slight rend- can you do a rendition of it no i'm not even going to touch that i'm not going to do <laughs> yeah. that I, but it's a thing you either have to see or not see. the way <laughs> but, he says uh, strings those words together so good he's like let me guess yeah. you're a race car driver and blah, 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 whatever and he just goes off on this thing and then and you met her on it blah, blah, blah. It's, it's so good it's like yeah and, and he does he does a whole thing about bees, a whole thing about uh, he, he does a joke about buying a big jar of pickles at Costco <laughs> that goes so far away from what you would expect it to be about. Yeah, that it's unbelievable. And like he'll let comics in the back ask him questions. Oh, yeah. What was that? Where it's like, say your name and what city college you would have went to. <laughs> right yeah <Or> he'll, <laughs> yeah and then they can ask their question after they do that and uh he just makes it a lot of fun and he'll he'll mess with the couples in the front row and you know uh but in a, it's all he walks a very very tight rope that not a lot of people could get away with where it's very clear that he's joking but he'll say things that are totally offensive to the couples oh yeah but they, but they love it they're having the time of their lives yeah he just know? has that where like you said he's able to anywhere i don't know if he still wears shorts but it yeah. just he just looks so he looks like bob he looks like bob hope kind of so <laughs> yeah he's got a, a similar look to bob hope but he he's also got that sort of thing that don rickles had yeah where you just instantly know that he's not being serious he's not taking any of this seriously and don't get you know all bent out of shape about anything he's saying you know because he doesn't he clearly doesn't yeah i don't know if he says this but something like this like if the the guy gets up to use the restroom with the couple and he'll he'll sit in earshot of the guy we're like as soon as he walks out or whatever he'll say stuff like i want to make love to you like you've never been made love to before on this stage (laughs) <laughs> well, the, or the some, way, something weird like that. The you way know? I heard him do it one yeah, night was yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple's in the front row, and the guy goes to the bathroom, and he, uh, as soon as the guy's gone, he goes, "You want to play a prank on your boyfriend?" And of course, most people are like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah." Okay, so you come up on stage, and we're having sex like really hard, really <laughs> just uh, just giving it to you like crazy. <laughs> and then he comes back in and goes, "What's going on here? For goodness sake!" And we go, "Oh, we were just joking. <laughs> <laughs> we were just doing a little goof on you." <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And it's, it's so funny, and like, and uh, to see it's it's fun the first time you see it because you're in the same position as everyone else. But it's a real fun when you kind of know that he's going to do something like that. Yeah. And then you can just watch the audience member's face when he's <laughs> suggesting that stuff because they never expect that, you know? Right, right. It's really funny. 
It was funny, man. And even the, 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 you know, the mixture of comics yelling out stuff or even just random, I don't want to say weirdos, yeah. but they are a little weird. But I like them, though. Like that one guy, he looked like a hillbilly to me. He had like a long beard and he was to the left sitting by the cover booth. And he goes, and his, I think his name was Earl also. And he's like, yeah. remember, remember his, his uh, question? It was like, why did the man sleep under the oil truck? Why? I don't remember that. And the answer was so he could wake up oily. Oh God! But it was just kind of funny in a weird way, like, yeah. wow, like, you know. Yeah, he gets a lot of weird stuff like that, you know. That was bananas, but um, um, I want to ask you a couple of questions before we go. So I was thinking about this. Okay. Um, you know, you grew up with uh, older siblings. I did as well, and you know, for some reason, I don't know, like. Today I thought about this toy that my sisters had. It was called a light bright. Did you ever of have course. a light bright? Or, oh, you did. Yeah, we weren't savages. Of course, I had a light bright. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, well. I didn't know what you know what age group or if it made it its way out to no, Colorado. No, light or... bright was it was a lot of fun uh, to kids back then. It wouldn't be fun at all to a kid today. But uh, <laughs> most of our stuff <laughs> wouldn't be. <laughs> It just wouldn't be because it was basically an okay. LED screen where you plug in every single light in the LED screen. Yeah. And you get one image after about an hour and a half of work. Like, eh, you know? see, I made a circle. Or like, or like what about like yeah. Etch-A-Sketch? Like kids today would be like. Well, but like Lightbrite had packs. Of, it was basically just black paper with white dots on oh, yeah, it yeah, and you follow little patterns and now boom you've made yeah, a... and it yeah it, it would make a thing like i had the spider-man one and and it made that sort of a, a thing that resembled spider-man and there was ones that kind of sort of resembled strawberry shortcake and that sort of thing you know uh i knew a guy once who drove to vegas for strawberry shortcake yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe that was a prostitute he knew or something yeah <laughs> i'm sitting here thinking my dumb ass is like oh strawberry shortcake it's not that good he's like no dummy it was a it's where it was legal bro <laughs> the mustang ranch yeah, I, sort of. I, I met a prostitute from the bunny ranch at the comedy store and her name was pumpkin Oh, gosh. So it may not be that far off yeah. but i remember her telling me i thought this was such a cute funny sort of story where she goes i was like do you have clients from all over the world she goes oh yeah i i'd been talking to one guy for about a year and he'd been planning to come up and see me on his birthday <laughs> and i was like oh that's kind of nice and he, she was like and i told him when you get here you're gonna get a big birthday surprise from me and i was like i was just imagining what the guy was imagining yeah it was like a birthday surprise from a prostitute in Las Vegas is going to be great. You know, whatever that is. <laughs> I know. And, and so like she got in there, she gets him blindfolded and everything. And she goes, are you ready for your big birthday surprise? And he's like, yeah, I'm ready. And I'm sure he was <laughs> Yeah. more than ready for whatever his birthday surprise was. And she goes, okay, take off the blindfold. So he takes it off <laughs> and she had made him cupcakes that said happy birthday. on Oh, the <laughs> he's like do i put my dick in it do i put my dick in both the cupcakes uh. which uh, i'm sure he you there's no way you wouldn't have to have like the best poker face in the world at that moment <laughs> and a, be like oh this is exactly what i was hoping for it's, from a know, prostitute in las vegas gee whiz cupcakes yeah. <laughs> you know frosted cupcakes i'll share and, i'll share i'll put one to go and share it with mom no. <laughs> yeah you know with mother <laughs> but like there is something kind of sweet about it like i yeah. was like i was thinking about it when she was telling me the story i was like how would i react to that i would probably just eat cupcakes and have a great time but right. <laughs> you know there's part of you that would be very very disappointed so in in the, in that <laughs> but know. another part of you that would be like this is actually much cooler in a way <laughs> right. and folks that's what you love about the pocket party podcast we go from talking about light bright to hookers in vegas just like that <laughs> you never know <laughs> but then we make it wholesome again with cupcake talk <laughs> yeah it's the yeah. most that's probably the most wholesome story i have on that subject you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's where hey mike you ever been with hookers where, where do you think i get my cupcakes <laughs> no. yeah, yeah all my baked goods come from that <laughs> from the, yeah a baker's dozen and a hooker's 69 i don't know um <laughs> yeah so i'm looking at light bright images you know like because you said like the patterns and it totally flooded me with memories of like and i'm looking at the images probably with what we grew up with like there was like a clown and i see a boat and then right. you, know, you could make a, but then it's funny, like the modern light bright had a, a map of the U S and in the center, it said five G <laughs> <laughs> like you could do that on your light bright, but, um, yeah, I'm checking out these old, okay. I'm going to name, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a list of the, I, I looked up uh, a site. It said groovy toys from the seventies and, uh, Okay. I want to throw out some names, and you tell me if it brings any memories, or you have any stories, or you got nothing, or just okay. First one, it's called. It was by Hasbro, and it was called Baby Alive. Uh, that was the baby that crapped its pants, right? I think so. It said, "Oh yeah, it says it, it includes dolls that crawl and sneeze." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could feed it, and it would poop. Ew. Yeah, I remember one of my neighbors had that, and. It was the trashiest looking thing ever. They oh, would gosh. get that. They were just awful. Yeah. Next one. See, I don't really remember any babies that talked like that or anything, but I, I remember seeing the commercials, but I don't think we had any. How about this big wheel? I had a big wheel, and the, the fatal flaw of the big wheel was that all the, the actual wheels on it are made of plastic. Yeah, oh, yeah. And so if you ever skidded like really skidded hard uh you would get a flat that was unfixable and your big wheel would kind of like thump 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 over yeah. that oh yeah because it wasn't around anymore right yeah i always wanted yeah, the green I machine i remember seeing the green machine i thought that was cooler like a cooler big wheel didn't it, yeah did that have like real tires I don't know if I had real tires, but I knew I had like these two stick shift type things in the front, so you could you could turn left and right with like these almost like you're flying a plane. I could have like those propeller or like those prop type of handles. Oh sure, yeah, green yeah, I machine. remember that. It was green, and you'd you'd pedal it. I remember the big wheel. I didn't have one, but my neighbors did, and I remember just like you said, the plastic, and you you really couldn't get it going. Sometimes the the plastic would just kind of go in a circle, like it was hard to get it really cooking, you know? Yeah. Yeah, oh. and it was hard to make turns. Yeah, it was hard. And I, maybe I was a little older by the time I tried the big wheel, and I was like, eh. So I liked the green machine. I was like, now this is cool. Yeah. Ready for the next one? Nerf. Yeah. Did you ever have a Nerf football? Everybody had a Nerf football. That was the Everyone best. that ever lived. Uh, <laughs> is from the day they started making them they were just everywhere they were great until they rolled into the gutter and got soaked with water then it was like then it would turn into like dodgeball i'm gonna hit you with a sponge you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> full of chemical waste you know yeah exactly do you know what nerf stands for uh no i don't um i'm just gonna take a wild guess uh non-expanding recreational foam <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually looking at the website, but yeah. I was gonna say that's not a yes. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's the definition. I know the nerf. I loved and I loved having nerfs. It was fun. Um, what about pet rock? You ever have a pet rock? No, we weren't poor. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember the pet rock, but I never had one. Oh, what about this? I had this shrinky dinks. Uh, yes, I did have shrinky dinks, and I was actually pretty good at them. Uh. That doesn't sound like it makes sense, but there was a technique when you would color them that uh, you had to understand that it was going to get shrunken down and look different. Yeah. Oh, oh. And, let me let me, just, let, me describe, right let me just let me describe let me describe real quick to the audience if they're not familiar with Shrinky Dinks. Uh, it says invented as a Boy Scout project, Shrinky Dinks were first sold in Wisconsin shopping malls in 1973. These thin pieces of plastic were made to decorate and cut out, and then you would bake them in the oven. Heating them caused the material to shrink and became hard and thick, mesmerizing young children like Darren Carter and Mike Black with their transformation. <laughs> Shrinky Dinks were wildly popular through the 1970s and into the mid-80s and are still available today. Yeah. Yeah. 
the end. <laughs> the know? end. I remember doing a joke about it. No one laughed, so I dropped it. I was like, yeah, we were so poor as a kid. The only thing we had in the oven was Trinky Dinks. <laughs> But, but I, and I told that joke in the '90s, and no one laughed. So I was like, okay. I tried it twice, and I was like, okay, maybe it's not funny. Or yeah, uh, we did. We bought a set of them, and it was uh, the Secret Wars, the Marvel superheroes mm -hmm. ones, and they came out l looking pretty good. But once you've done it, it's done. There's not much. Uh, yeah, it's like to I, it, I just remember know. making like flowers, or you know, and then you, like you said, you're like, okay. Do I mean you remember it was a similar thing to Shrink Eating, but it wasn't the exact same, where it was uh, kind of like you make your own stained glass, where there was like a wire frame, and then you would put these plastic colored beads in each section of oh, the Oh, yeah, wire that frame. I do remember, yeah. And, and then you would make a little design. Yeah, I, I had a couple of those. I had a Dukes of Hazard, one of those. Oh, dude, that's cool. And uh, but they did them for every like big property. I think you know. Speak and spell. Never had one. Uh, me either. Uh, I I liked it from ET. Like mm. ET made me want to get one, mm. but then I thought I, I don't have any alien to communicate with i don't need one i'll get one where I need one. <laughs> this one's right up your alley i don't even need to ask you this because i'll just read it to you really quick star wars action figures <laughs> it says in the wake yeah. of the blockbuster hit star wars in 1977 toy company kenner began frantically producing movie related toys when they frantically yeah. is the key word on that oh. because uh mattel was uh the first person that lucas went to mm. And he was like, I'm doing this movie, Star Wars. I think it's going to be a big hit. And uh, you guys want to do the toys for it? And Mattel, idiotically, were, but also just being honest, they were like, uh, you should have come to us two years ago, man. It takes us two years to do it. Mm. Uh, so we're not going to have anything by Christmas time. <laughs> that, uh, it's just not going to work, so we're going to pass. So they passed Kenner, which was part of Nerf, uh, they were like a small little division of Nerf. The oh, guy wow. there was like, uh, yeah, we're not going to get it done in time, but we'll do it. And what <laughs> we'll do is we'll sell mm. basically an IOU to everybody. We'll call it an early bird kit. Oh, wow. And it'll be like, it'll have like artwork and stuff and say, you know, when the first figures come, we're going to ship them to you. But they can put that thing under the tree and that'll be some, and it'll have like a, a stand for where you can put your figures when you get them. The, I'm looking at a box and it says um, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back special seven action figures and it's and then, and then it says Kenner and it says this this is this set is exclusive to Sears. So I don't yeah, know, I don't, was that was that how it was well, back that, then? That, or? that meant that you could only get it there, and uh, yeah, that, it was a good business model you know to get people to buy from them but look up the star wars early bird kit mm. just like on ebay or something uh and see what it's going for now okay now early. at the time it was i think it was about 12 dollars mm. and, oh. and it guaranteed you the first four figures the star wars early bird kit i'm looking at oh wait here's a for some reason, my internet is very slow. It says the the SWCA dot com, the Star Wars. Maybe that's what that stands for. I don't know. Yeah, I shouldn't have left it up to you. To Sorry about that. I know now. I'm like, damn, everything's frozen. Gosh darn it. Not. I forgot you're not good at life. <laughs> I'm so. not good at life. Oh, here we go. Um, is it? Is it? Does this make sense? Uh, no, never mind. I was gonna say, is it? Is it thirty three bucks? No, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I forget it. You know, you you would know more about uh, it. Oh yeah. Me. Okay. A vintage yeah. Star Wars 1977 early bird certificate package set. The first one I saw is at the bargain price of five hundred and ninety eight dollars. <laughs> oh wow. Cents. Oh dude. I'm glad I and yeah. That's just the cardboard. <laughs> that's oh, wow. no figures, oh. no nothing. You know, and the dude. one guy has one yeah. that is like 
graded so it's in like mint mint condition wow two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars or best offer dude you would be a, <laughs> you would be a pissed off kid if i was your relative and i'm like i got you what you wanted mike and it was only three thirty three dollars and you're like right. you're like grandpa that's not even the right one I'm like, like yeah and i'm like ah this little kid he's such a brat <laughs> but yeah i clicked i would have clicked on the wrong one that just came, probably one that just came out like two days ago or something yeah exactly <laughs> like, <clears throat> stretch armstrong any thoughts on it oh yeah it was a, a great toy it was a great idea for a toy it was basically a, a rubber flesh suit <laughs> yeah like like for I, this guy who uh inside it was filled with like petroleum jelly or something mm. like that and i remember one of my neighbors having one and you know we were violent kids <laughs> of the 80s yeah and he was standing on top of uh, like a, a power generator and he slit uh <laughs> stretch armstrong's throat and oh all no things, like uh filament came <laughs> filling out and it spilled all over the back of this power generator. <laughs> and we were both like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like we, we, killed, we killed Stretch Armstrong or whatever. And his dad comes out and he goes, what are you doing? <laughs> Get off of that thing. You know, and, like, and he was just sure that it was going to explode and kill us, you know, but uh, it didn't. It was, you know, I don't know what happened, but it do, nobody died. Yeah. Do you remember it, Plastic Man? Yeah, the superhero Plastic Man. Uh, yeah, I thought that was cool because I, I, he reminded me of Stretch Armstrong. Like he would stretch out yeah. super far. And sh- well, that's what I, even as a kid, I thought this was weird. I guess it was he just wasn't a recognizable enough character. But they had comic book themed Stretch Armstrong toys. They had like Hulk and Spider-Man and Superman and Batman. But I remember thinking back then, I was like, why haven't they done Plastic Man? He's the perfect superhero for this, and they never did. And mm. even now, as as sophisticated as uh, audiences are now, and there's more and more uh, mainstream comic book stuff, you would think by now they'd have done a Plastic Man like that, and they still haven't. Hmm. I heard that he's uh, in obscurity doing a podcast. <laughs> 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 Ooh, they wouldn't hit a little close to home, buddy, on myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember the party starter but uh, action figure? <laughs> the, yeah. That does not that's not a thing. <laughs> I know, I know. What about this one? Did you ever play Toss Across, Tic Tac Toe? Oh no. Oh. I mean I <clears throat> I I played it but not because I liked it. It was just to be polite to a friend that had it. Oh, that would have been that friend because we had. I loved it. It was like tic tac toe and you little bean bag and you throw it. Oh right, X. Then you go and you do it with the bean bag and that was cool. It kind of prepares you later in life for a uh, cornhole for or something. What? I don't know cornhole or horseshoes. For cornhole, I don't want to be prepared later in life for cornhole. <laughs> <laughs> it grooms you for cornhole. No. Yeah, I don't need that. I don't, <laughs> yeah. you, don't want to, you don't want to be groomed for cornhole? No. no. All right, and the last... Oh, for some yeah. reason that reminded me of a friend who definitely had that stupid thing, the tic-tac-toe thing. Yeah. But this uh, friend of mine, Adam, had the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars. And he was just trying to impress, impress me, I guess. He put on roller skates and started, like, <laughs> zipping around with the Millennium Falcon. Oh, and they took a bad turn. Uh oh! And it shattered into a million pieces. Oh he... no! <laughs> and uh, his dad was like, "What are you doing?" And he's like, <laughs> "I broke the Millennium Falcon." <laughs> and like, it was one of those where a kid's crying so hard that tears are flying off of his face. <laughs> he was like, "I broke the Millennium Falcon, <laughs> and I skinned my knees." Oh. <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I should be going." <laughs> <laughs> this got really weird all of a sudden. I know. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave now. <laughs> Dude, roller skating was fun back in the day, man. I used to love to roller skate. That's nothing. Yeah, but not with the millennium. No, no, you don't do anything. Yeah, you're gonna break. It's like. Yeah. 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 I used to roller roller skate with my parents' favorite china. 
<laughs> Last one. See if you can finish the sentence. Weebles wobbles, but they don't fall down. Yeah, that's right. Damn right they don't. That's and, right. That uh, was by Mattel. <clears throat> yeah, you pretty much have to crack a weeble to get it to fall down. And even then it might not, you know. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. That one was not by Weeble. That was by Romper Room. The egg-shaped characters made by Romper Room, the television show, consisted of families, including the pet dog. And they were oval in design that didn't allow for falling and durable. And they were very durable. Yeah, they were very uh, cool in their own way. I remember having... They used to do play sets for just about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a Weeble uh, haunted house. And it was actually a fun little set because it had like a bookcase that would turn around. You would Ooh, put cool. the Weeble in front of it and it would turn around and he would disappear. And uh, they had like a Frankenstein's lab where you could put one on oh, like, cool. a, a table and stuff like that. It was a fun little thing for... Uh, they were such weird looking uh, characters, you know. I'm looking at the. Uh, oh my gosh! I'm, by the way, it's made by Hasbro, and I'm looking at the the uh, the 1976 Hasbro Weebles Haunted House. It's a great Father's Day gift. It says. It was. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, it says where Weebles wobbles and they go bump in the night. Wonderful, scary, fun. You yeah, know? and I had like the figures for that one were cool because it was like an egg shaped. Uh, Dracula and Frankenstein and stuff. Like oh, that's that. so cool! That actually looks really cool, man. It, it, I hadn't thought like about Weebles. Yeah. You know, it's I'm 46 now, but when I was six, that thing was amazing. <laughs> yeah, know? and I haven't thought about Weebles wobbles in, <laughs> in years. <laughs> right. You know, like, but we both remembered it. Weebles wobbles, but they don't fall down. Do you remember color forms? I don't think so. It was like a just a plastic background and then you had these little plastic they were like stickers but they were just plastic strips that stuck to the background and you make little scenes hmm I, I'm looking at it right now I don't I don't think I had this wow color what, forms uh, what's the thing that I think would be more your generation microman look up microman microman okay micro man wow it's a picture of me nude that's terrible <laughs> no <laughs> oh that's like uh, micro man is <laughs> micro yeah is it a, is it a the adventures of micro man oh. was it like little robots and stuff yeah Wrestlers? micro knots might micro be knots oh am i supposed to be looking at micro knots yeah micro knots uh micro and then n-a-u-t-s like oh yeah astronaut. for some reason i knew how to spell it but yeah i've seen that but i didn't i never played i never played with that they came and, from uh, inner space. I like that. Yeah, they came from inner space. Interesting. The other one that was a big deal back then was these giant robots called Shogun Warriors. Oh, I remember that. They were came from like Japanese cartoons. And uh, there was one called Mazinger Z. And uh, that cartoon used to be on all the time. And Shogun Warriors were... The robots were like... Uh, like about two feet tall and you'd press a button on their arm and their fist would launch off and stuff. You know? Oh yeah. I remember that. Those are a lot of fun. They made a Godzilla one even. That's cool. And so it, it shot fire breath. You know? Dang. All right, Mike. Well, uh, I want to thank you again for coming on the pocket party podcast. I want to make another cup of coffee and, uh, do you uh, do you have something to do? <laughs> Would you want to go live on IG for about ten minutes just to see if it works? If anyone watches, you never give up. I never give up. I know. I just did this. I just did a bonus. <laughs> How long have we been on here? A, a little over an hour. <laughs> so that's two two hours of <laughs> we go. free entertainment for the people. That, I know. You've already done, and now you want to go on Instagram. My phone has. It's like eight percent battery. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you? I know. I should probably spread this out over. You know. Yeah. Let's do it a different day. We'll do the IG live on a different day if you want. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, dang it. Dang it. You're like, hey, I'm like, what are you doing all day Monday? <laughs> like, all day. Yeah. <laughs> <It goes> <laughs>
I got a I got an eight hour shift with Darren, <laughs> Darren on Monday. I know. What do we do? We just talk about. We just reminisce about other days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then next week he I'm just like, ask me a bunch of weird questions. <laughs> and next week we'll do a podcast. Hey, let's talk about last week's podcast. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. I'm all, you know, I, I, it's funny because I get in these these jags where I'm like, not like a manic depressive, but I'm like, yeah, let's. I'm, you know, I'm I'm pumping out videos. We're doing podcasts, and I'm. I here's the thing. Whenever I think to go live. It's usually like late at night and nobody's watching and no one's awake, you know? Right. Remember the last one we did? It was like a Sunday night. It was like a 1 a.m. And we ended up having like about 41 people that night. But it's it still, it was just like, you know, I was like, I wonder what happened. Yeah. Do, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it during the day when we're both fresh. Like, I want to, you know what I mean? Like, we're both like. Yeah fresh but i but i have these topics so this will be good we'll like we'll hit them with it man you gave you did give you you went above and beyond you guys applaud for mike black <laughs> you know everything from Thanks. childhood toys circus circus vegas elvis presley the peterson museum i mean this guy just keeps giving i woke up at 11 a.m sharp to do this yeah i know now we're we're closing in quickly on 3 p.m this has been a, <laughs> it's just been <laughs> yeah. No, I had a lot of fun, but yeah, my phone really is about to die. Is, is it getting all hot? Does your phone get hot? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. my phone gets hot, and I put it in a little Ziploc bag with a little ice pack when I'm going on a hike, and that, that will cool it down. That's a good tip. Do it so we can go live. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, you're trying to trick me. Anyways, Mike Black, thank you so much. We'll hang out later. And I'll be at the, I don't know if you're going to go to the comedy store tonight, but I'm going to head down there later tonight. No, but plug our Wednesday thing. I, oh, oh, Wednesday, you guys. go. Uh, I don't know when this one's airing, but uh, but yes, we. you will see us together soon. I want to do one where we're like really, we can plan and like really get together with the listeners and maybe, you know, grab a bite afterwards or something or even just shoot the breeze oh, in the park. You know what I mean? Something like that. Maybe it doesn't even have to be a comedy show. I mean, it'd be cool if it was a comedy show, but we should probably do a comedy show and a podcast somehow do that live with, with you know, the, you know what I mean? In front of an audience. We do and, a comedy brunch podcast. Yeah, like something. We'll figure something out. We need to find a space and a place and a... And a thing, we'll, we'll 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 work on that. Especially if there's more of a demand, then we'll be like, okay, because a, a few people hit me up. Shout out to the Miguel Romero. He wanted to go to this this one in June, but we can't do that one. But anyways, all oh, right, okay. guys. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. Have a great day, man, and we'll uh, we'll right. talk to you soon. Thank you so much. You too, buddy. Bye bye. Okay, you got it. Bye. Oh yeah, baby. You know what time it is. Time to get that party started. All up in your ear holes. Here we go. When you had a bad day. Want those bad vibes to go away When every day life gets harder Harder Darren Carter You need the party starter It's, it's the, the Pocket Party Podcast With the Rock Pocket Party Podcast In your ear holes Pocket Party Podcast In your ear holes Pocket Party Podcast Oh, if your day needed a booster Then you need to talk to Red Rooster Mr. Carter about to take you to school. Here we go. Don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt yourself.